Well, believe it or not, it seemed to have got it working. But just in case I don't post all the previous work that I tried to get it to this point, I'll give you an overview and then you can skip those if I do post them. I managed to solder the capacitor and the resistor onto the appropriate places even though you're not supposed to. So that did not kill the chip. It's The uh, LED is off right now, but that's a timing cycle issue. It's not dead, or at least it shouldn't be. The capacitor and the resistor affect the timing. Which pins the LED goes on determines the timing as well. So as you can see, it's cycling back through the clock again. So it'll do this for a while. It'll change speeds, then it'll shut down again. And if you put it on different pins, should be working, it's just in between clock cycles. But you can't really tell because of course there's no juice going to it and it's not lighting up. Let's try these pins. Chances are this is going to change its timing cycle too. So like I said, I had uh, soldered the resistor and the capacitor on, but I wasn't getting any lighting whatsoever. So I actually shut those off, or I uh, actually clipped the wires. Let me set this down. This is some really bad background music right now. Not that I don't enjoy the song, but... It's really, uh, distracting. So here's what we've got going on here. Ah, uh, cool, it broke a little more. So this is the, uh, positive in, this is negative out. The one here with the crossbar is a reset. The clock button has the resistor and the capacitor. Like I said, I wasn't getting any lighting, so I snipped those in a place where I could easily put them back together if I needed. And uh, I gotta say, working with this is definitely a hassle, but the more it gets done, the easier it should get over time. I've got a few of these around, so I don't mind if I burn this one. Uh, for real quick reference, what I used in the previous videos was the CMOS cookbook. I used go to Starship Modeler, look for DOS Uber Blinker lighting effects with the 4060 chip and LEDs. And the other book, of course, is here it is Engineer's Mini Notebook. It's probably decades out of 1984, decades out of print. This is good for the resistor chart at the end. And I'll let you get a shot of this if you want to pause. So when you're reading resistors, let me pull one out here. We'll just use this guy. We've got green, blue, red, gold. So green is 5, blue is 6, red is 100, so that's 56, 100. Gold is a plus or five percent, plus or minus five percent tolerance. So 5600 plus or minus five percent. It's not uncommon to get one ohm, one mega ohm, and this is all rated in ohms, and I can't tell you what those mean. Capacitors, which are the other things in here I'm using, are rated in farads. Can't tell you what those mean. This is 0.01 though. Presumably it's a measure of energy storage. They come in various sizes up to hundreds, but those get really huge. To show you a difference, 
This one is a 47 microfarad compared to 0 0.01 farads microfarads. Same stuff, different technology, holds more electricity. I'm going to keep working with this because I really need it to get it to uh, work and mastering this chip is going to add a whole lot of uh, possibilities to anybody's arsenal of tricks with their scale models. So if you don't want to sit through all the other videos, if I post them all, this is basically what I was going for. Having a breadboard to do this with is a lot easier. But plugging your LED into any of these pins here will give you a various blink rate. The resistor and the capacitor will change that blink rate. So even though it looks like it's on right now, it's really, there we go with the blink schedule. So various chips will give various blinks and uh, I think I'm pretty much through demoing this at this point. This is uh, it's a hassle, but it's a worthy hassle. Catch y'all later.